Hey guys, it's Emma. Welcome back to my channel. This video is focusing on a topic that everyone has to think about at some point when job searching compensation. Specifically, I will be telling you how much I was making while I worked as a data scientist and software engineer. And yes, there will be details. If you have been watching my channel for a while, then you're likely already aware that before starting my own company, I worked at Airbnb. I was initially offered a position as a level four data scientist. And after about nine months in my original position, I transferred to a new role as a software engineer. Now for this video, we'll be looking at what I was making as a data scientist and software engineer. I will be using my own experience as a starting point to discuss how data scientist is compensated more generally and what you can expect to spend to get a similar salary. As some of you know, I've hesitated to talk about how much I made previously. I have always felt that talking about financial matters is implied. But the comments and emails from a lot of you have helped me see that sharing my story can be very beneficial. I think that sharing my experience will allow others to better understand what they should expect when thinking about compensation. And as they say, knowledge is power. This is especially true for those that have never had a data scientist or software engineer job and may be unfamiliar with the way that these compensation packages work. Don't worry if that sounds like you. We'll go over all of them later on in this video. The other thing I plan to touch on in this video is not just what a data scientist makes, but also what it costs to land a data scientist job. While most people are attracted to data science for the remuneration, few people talk about the true cost of what it takes to land a job in the industry. Getting even a single offer can be the result of months of preparation and a large amount of capital invested. So with all that, we have a lot to cover. Let's get right into the dollars of data scientist compensation. Let's start with the basics of compensation for technical positions such as data scientists and software engineers in the tech industry. When it comes to compensation, there's a lot more to know than just salary. There are other factors such as different types of stock offerings and bonuses to consider as well. Let's briefly look at what a typical offer looks like so we know what we are looking at when we go over my own compensation package. First up will be the salary. This is one part that most of us are already familiar with as anyone who has received an annual salary has had a similar experience. Salary is a base level of compensation upon which other incentives may be added. One of those incentives is typically stock. Stock offered as part of a compensation package can be broken into three basic categories, shares of stock in publicly traded companies, stock options, usually private sales of stock to employees, and the restricted stock options, or RSUs. That may sound a lot to understand, but what it means in short is that employees can either be gifted stock or given the option to buy it. Stock is usually dispersed over a number of years with the industry average being four. Salary and the stock are standard for most data science jobs, and many companies will then also offer a variety of bonuses to attract talents. This can be sign-on bonus, any bonuses, or refresh bonus. They vary in how often they are paid out for what reason. For example, a sign-on bonus is usually a one-shot deal designed as a negotiating ploy to make signing a contract irresistible. An annual bonus is usually in terms of a percentage of your salary and it can vary from company to company. In addition to all of the more financial considerations, there are other factors that come into play with an offer, such as coming policy regarding vacation time and insurance offerings. Your personal situation will determine how much these other factors play a role in evaluating your offer. For example, I have friends who consider the ability to work remotely over anything else. So that's the basic compensation package for data scientists. It includes salary, stock, bonuses, and other considerations such as flexibility to work remotely. Now, while that is the basic outline of a package, compensation will vary from county to county, just like the interview process is highly diverse. For example, a data scientist may do similar tasks at two different counties, but be classified at a different level at each county. The level difference will result in a different compensation level. Also, even at the same level, two counties may have different compensation. So it pays to do your homework when it comes to a company's compensation structure. Just because you are doing the same type of work does not mean you will receive the same pay. As a brief aside, if you would like to know more about how positions and the levels compare across the industry, check out the link in the description for levels.fii. This is a really useful website that shows information on the basics of compensation packages for tech companies such as Apple, Amazon, and Google with each company's proper level indicated. Be careful when considering this information though, as much of the data used is user source and could be prone to bias. All right, now that 
we know more about what the compensation package looks like. Let's talk about numbers. Of course, my personal knowledge is limited by speaking with friends and colleagues over the years has given me a good idea of what these scientists can expect to make. The observations I have made truly run the gamut. I have friends who just clear 100k to those that make half a million dollars, and I even know of people who regularly clear a million dollars when all is told with zero compensation. It really does depend on the individual, their experience level, and their situation. Okay, so what about my personal situation? Well, as promised, here are the details. When I was first offered a position at Airbnb, it was for a data scientist position at 315 grand. This is an all-inclusive number that takes into account my salary, any bonuses, and my RSUs. A pretty fantastic compensation package, I must admit, especially when you consider I had just been laid off two months previously, a low point I've touched on previously. For those of you that don't know, what may make my story especially useful is that I actually switched to an engineering team about nine months after I was hired. Although this was a change in position, the compensation itself did not change immediately. And in my case, the overall compensation level did not change at all. If you're interested in learning more about why I made this switch, I covered it in a previous video I made and linked to in the description. There's still a little more to my story though. Airbnb went public in December 2020. As I had been an employee with them since March 2019, I had already accrued RSUs that now gain external value once the company went public. While the rules governing the trading of these shares can often be complicated, the end result was that after two years of working there, I was making over 500k per year. This drastic increase was largely attributed to the rise in stock price. In the end, you can say I got lucky in both my timing and the coming that I worked for. Now, before you get too excited by the raw numbers of my compensation and start making plans for all of the things you are going to buy when you land a data scientist job, let's take a second to consider the other side of things. What did I have to spend to land that job? Everyone focuses on the great potential rewards of a data scientist, but few talk about what it can cost in terms of time and money to successfully get a job in the industry. Data science pays very well, and because of this, it is an industry that attracts very bright and motivated people. Competition can be fierce, and even after you land a job, it is an industry that requires constant improvement, unless you want to risk being left behind by your peers. Of course, I'm not saying this to discourage anyone. I just want to give a sober reckoning of what the true cost of some of the data science compensation packages you see online might be. Let's look at some of the costs associated with landing a data scientist position. There are two main components I will talk about education and time. The educational component can easily cost tens of thousands of dollars alone, not to mention the hours spent studying your craft. A master's degree is becoming more of a prerequisite for many positions in the tech world. Still, if you don't have a statistics or a computer science degree, you don't need to panic yet. I had a degree in civil engineering before I landed my first data scientist position. Basically, as long as you are willing to invest the time and money to get the skills required, you will always have a chance and don't let a lack of an advanced degree stop you. So how did I do this? Well, I fill in my knowledge gaps using MOOCs, books, and other online resources just like you are now. I have taken several Udacity and Coursera courses, which I found pretty helpful at the beginning of my career. If you feel comfortable handling the online learning environment, I highly recommend taking some online courses for filling technical gaps. I even did another master's degree in computer science while working full-time, but I don't recommend it because you can learn so much in the actual job and you can fill in gaps by taking more targeted courses. However, getting access to these resources isn't cheap and it can end up costing thousands of dollars or even tens of thousands of dollars. For me, I spent multiple five figures investing in myself. The other big cost in achieving your data science job dreams will come in terms of time. Time. It can be hard to estimate all the time you will spend learning new skills, getting interviews, preparing for interviews, and maintaining your abilities. For example, if you opt for a master's degree, this could be two years of your life devoted to study, which is clearly a significant amount of time. The time is a cost just as the money is, and a sacrifice that you need to consider if you are willing to make. Also, after you land your dream job, this is a field that requires continual learning. Technology changes quickly, and there are new things you need to learn to keep up with the job demand. That requires time as well. For me, I did not have any formal education on A-B testing or machine learning, so I build my knowledge by reading books, taking courses, and talking with experts. That was a huge time commitment. Again, I hope I'm not discouraging any of you by focusing on what it costs to get a data scientist job and maintain your job. I just want everyone to remember the reality of what it takes to get there after looking at the amazing compensation offers. Because the truth is, 
Even with all of the competition in the field, anyone can land a data science job if they work hard enough at it. And I would never discourage anyone from doing so. If my experience is not enough to convince you, you can easily find many people who are able to do it online. You can definitely do it, I have no doubt about it, but I just want to be candid and realistic about what it takes to do it. Okay, that's everything for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed learning more about how much a data scientist can really make and also what it really takes to get there. I try my best to offer valuable content for you guys. So if you have ideas or topics you want me to cover, please let me know. Also subscribe to my channel if you haven't done it already so that you can stay up to date on all my latest content. See you guys.